Yeah. Hi, welcome. This is Mary Doyle from the Johns Hopkins Education and Research Center. And today I want to welcome Dr. Kirsten Kohler and Dr. Anna Roll, also from the Johns Hopkins Education and Research Center. And they are in the Industrial Hygiene Program. And they're here to answer some questions that we have about the use of face masks uh, in this time of COVID-19. And the question is, um, should we be wearing uh, face protection when we go outside? And if so, what type of face masks should we wear uh, that we're being protected and that we're not spreading any virus, but also that we're saving the valuable PPE for um, the folks on the front line who need them? So welcome, Anna and Kirsten. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. So the first thing we wanted to talk about is what is the hierarchy of controls that we hear? Right. So, so when when we do our job in in the world of industrial hygiene and occupational safety and health, we always look at solving or controlling a problem with this hierarchy of control um, mentality. And so, the there's a um, depending on the effectiveness of the solution. So, as you can see on the on the uh, figure, we have this inverted pyramid to put more the, the more effective uh, efficient solution at the top and the least efficient at the bottom. And so we typically look to eliminate the problem or the, the hazard first. And in the case of COVID-19, elimination means social isolation because we need to to just make sure that the virus is not spreading through the community or through uh, the different uh, routes of exposure. And, and uh, so that is why it's very important to do this social isolation. And it's the first thing that people need to, to realize that is helping. Um, the second line, the ineffectiveness is substitution. If you have a, a something that is less harmful or less um, hazardous, but in the case of a virus or a biological, um, problem there's this is not an option so so it's not applicable so the next level of of effectiveness is with the engineering controls and uh, this is um, what we use to to uh, remove or separate the person from the hazard and in the case um, of, of COVID-19 which actually is the same for most of our uh, airborne hazards is ventilation or put a physical barrier between the the virus and the person. So in this case, you know, just increasing ventilation in your home, uh, maybe adding a um, an air purifier, uh, that this kind of thing would help remove the virus if it's in the air from the air. So so move it away from your um, from your nose where you might breathe it. Um, some administrative controls is the next level of effectiveness and in this case it's modifying the, what we do so um, it, that this is why we are like working from home so removing yourself again from from the hazard stagger schedule if you have to go if you're essential personnel try to be try to have less um, crowding in a space uh, also space people away and some supermarkets are already starting to to ask people to enter, you know, uh, less people at a time so that there's less crowding inside a space. Um, and more important than anything, a hand hygiene. So the hand hygiene is an administrative control because you're, you're removing, in the, in the case that you have the virus in your hands, that you have touched the surface, then you are, you're uh, removing that virus um, or from the surfaces. And the least effective, which is, um, has always been at the bottom of the of the pyramid of the hierarchy of controls is personal protective equipment, and this is where the masks and the the gloves uh, fall. And so, so it's very important that people realize that this gives you the least uh, effectiveness because it depends on many things. First, it depends that you're wearing it correctly, that you have the right fit, that you have the right respirator or the right mask for the for the task that you're doing. Um, and, and it gives, it may uh, um, be a problem because it may give you a, a, a false sense of, sense of security. If you have a mask that is not fitting well, you might uh, increase your risk instead of just isolating yourself. Um, so hopefully that's clear. Great, thank you so much. I don't know um, if Kristen wants to add anything. 
No, I, I think it really puts it into the context of, of the way we think about these um, these issues through the hierarchy of controls really helps you think about masks as being that last line of defense. Great. And could you talk a little bit about the, the particle size and why this is important when we choose PPE? Yeah, so the reason we want to think about la masks as the last line of defense, especially when we're talking about homemade masks that people are going to have available to them during the COVID crisis, is really because particles span a huge range of sizes. And so our ability to effectively remove them from the air through the use of something like a homemade mask varies really dramatically. And so in the first column of this figure, I've shown the relative particle size of different particles, of course, blown up hugely. So all of these particles in real life are really tiny. The biggest ones are about 100 micrometers, which is about the diameter of a human hair. We can think about it in terms of the scale of the sizes of particles as ranging from 100 micrometers, where we can barely see the edge of this huge particle, down to something like 0.05 micrometers, which is barely visible on this plot. So we have this huge range of particle sizes. And the way those particles behave in the air varies dramatically based on their particle size. So for those really big particles, some of them may come from coughing and sneezing, and these particles can generally travel up to a couple meters before they're going to settle to the ground. And that's because the gravity acts on them very quickly. They have enough mass that they can be removed from there within just seconds. And so as long as people are being reasonable in the way that they're behaving, trying to cover their mouth when they cough and sneeze, um, and we can keep our distance of a meter and a half or two meters away from people, then we can be sure uh, that we can protect ourselves reasonably well from these. Masks are actually going to be relatively efficient in moving these very large particles, but they're probably not so necessary because our other effective measures like social isolation can protect us equally well. The next size category of particles is about 10 micrometers. These particles are also removed by gravity, but much slower because they have a smaller mass. So these particles can take 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on their size before they're going to actually be removed from the air but they can rel usually only travel relatively small distances, even from a sneeze before they're gonna settle to the ground, unless they're moved through strong air currents indoors, which most places don't have really strong air currents. So this still means that maintaining our social distancing is one of the best ways to limit our exposure to these particles. Homemade masks may help reduce the transmission of some of these size particles. Typical cloth masks might remove about 50% of these particles, but when you think about it, is removing 50% of the particles enough to keep you protected? And we don't have that much information, but I wouldn't rely on that. The next size smaller is uh, about 0.3 micrometers. And it turns out that these, this size of particle is really re difficult to remove from the air. In fact, when we hear about testing of N95 filters, it's this size that's used to test those masks, not the smaller particles, 0.3 microns. And that's because these particles are actually the hardest to remove from air. Um, these air particles, because they're small, they don't have very much mass. Gravity doesn't remove them from the air very quickly. They can actually stay in the air for hours, depending on the ventilation within a room. The big challenge here is that homemade masks are unlikely to remove these particles. These particles make it through the cloth very uh, easily. Probably only about 20% of those particles would be removed from a homemade cloth mask. Um, but these particles are big enough that they could carry uh, COVID-19. So we want to be sure that we understand that masks are going to have limited ability to remove these particles uh, when we're wearing um, homemade masks. The smallest size particles, something like 0.05 microns, um, they actually diffuse to surfaces rapidly, and so they're actually easier for masks to remove than the, the 0.3 micron particles. This is kind of counterintuitive, but true. Uh, but these particles are so small that they don't carry COVID-19 anyway, and so we don't need to worry too much about them. That's great information, Kirsten. How about if somebody has um, a, a, a person in the household who has COVID-19, maybe some mild symptoms, uh, what's the best way that someone can protect themselves um, if they're having to care for this person? 
Should they make a homemade mask? Uh, and if so, what type of materials should they use? Actually, um, we would like to think about the, the hierarchy of controls again when answering this question. So isolating yourself is actually the most efficient way to do it um, as much as possible. Um, also considering opening windows, using, you know, increasing your, your ventilation inside the, the house, um, that would remove those particles that are gonna stay in the air that, that we believe it are, um, have a potential also of, of in infection. Clearly cleaning surfaces, because as, as Kirsten explained, a lot of these bigger particles are going to deposit on surfaces. So cleaning surfaces and washing your hands is, is one of the, the, the most efficient um, ways to, to protect yourself. And um, if you, anybody you know, or if you suspect that you have COVID-19, then using a homemade mask may help. Um, probably not stopping those smaller 0.3 particles, but stopping the bigger particles. And so together with the, so, with the distance and the, and the washing of the surfaces, it might give a small um, increased protection to, to, the, to helping in the house if somebody's infected. One of the things that I've been reading is that uh, masks may give people a false sense of security. So they think, oh, if I have a mask on, I'm protected, and you may do more hazardous activities with the mask on than you would otherwise do. So I think we have to remember all the important steps that we've been taught about social distancing, about washing our hands frequently, um, and things like that, then if we do have somebody in the house who's suspected of, of having COVID-19. Right. So were there any other um, points that you can um, share with people about um, hierarchy of controls or about, um, you know, about this epidemic, this pandemic? Um, so one thing I wanted to add was that I think we should remember that we're, if we're going to wear a mask, that we should use some best practices. We should remember first that this mask is not necessarily going to keep us healthy. And so you should still continue to use social, social isolation as your number one priority to be able to keep yourself healthy. Um, you should also, um, when you're going to, if you've decided that you're going to wear a mask, wash your hands with soap and water before you put on your mask. Tie with the secure the lower ties first and then use the uh, upper ties to bring it up over your mouth and tie it behind your head. And then a really important piece that I think isn't getting very much attention is that you should assume that that mask has a virus on it at that point. If you're going to be out in public and these masks do remove some number of particles with virus on it, then every time you touch your mask, you should wash your hands. Yes, every time. And so you should really think carefully about whether that's something you can follow through on. Uh, once you've decided to take the mask off, you should put it in a, a separated place from all the other members of your family until it can be washed, and then wash your hands again afterwards. And make sure that you wear a clean mask every time you put one on. So really thinking carefully about that this mask may have virus on it, that can be transmitted to the skin on your face, onto your hands, and then later you touch your face, um, and being really careful about using that, not thinking it's just this catch-all that's really going to protect you from all of those particles. That's a great point, Kirsten. Thank you. I, had, I just wanted to add one, one last point about gloves. Uh, other than people in the healthcare community, we don't think anybody should be wearing gloves. If you are out in the in, in in the supermarket, for example, just wash your hands as soon as possible or carry some, some uh, disinfecting gel with you. The gloves are potentially also giving you a, a false sense of security. We've seen photos of people like eating from a bag with their gloves on. So it completely defeats the whole, the whole point of, of, uh, of washing your hands and being careful. Plus, it's a big um, environmental um, pollutant, right? We don't want more plastic and gloves are, 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 are not going to degrade. So it, it's just uh, unnecessary in our point. 
I'll be yeah, it's it really comes back to the point of most people have not been trained on the use of this type of equipment, whether it's a real N95 or even a homemade surgical mask or gloves. Most people haven't received any training on the proper use of this type of equipment. And so just wearing a gloves, but then continuing to touch your face and touch your phone and eat and do all of the things that you normally do. The virus doesn't go through your skin anyway, so you haven't provided yourself with any additional protection by wearing those gloves. And using a mask inappropriately could have the same consequences. And I think it's important if people are going to the grocery store or picking up food from delivery service to make sure that you uh, take those items out of the box, dispose of that box uh, in the trash can wash your hands completely and then any outer packaging um, of the food that if you can um, remove those outer packaging and then store that food in, a, in a, a different container before you put it in the refrigerator or before you put it in the cupboard as much as you can decontaminate as possible wash off your bottles of milk and uh, things that can be washed and then repackage things and then of course decontaminate your hands by thoroughly washing your hands as well Absolutely. Any other points that you would like to share? I think that's it. Okay. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I appreciate your, your helpful information for us and uh, helping us understand about how the particles uh, act in the air and how we can protect ourselves uh, in this time of uh, COVID-19. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mary.